Hi, my name is Robert Aaron Tisbaya. I'm ID120, and today I'll be talking about my reflections, evaluations, and general insights on the modules, lessons, and discussions that we tackled for my Literature of the World class, ZO2. And I'll be dividing this video into five parts. Parts 1, 2, and 3 will be dedicated to modules 1, 2, and 3. Module 1, National and the Global. Module 2, Colonial and Post-Colonial Present. And Module 3, my personal favorite, Roots and Routes. And then Part 4 will be Outside of Module Takeaways. And then Part 5 will be the reflection of the lessons and then my learnings and then its application in my life and in the future. So in each of these modules, I'll be giving my thoughts and then evaluations of the modules and then I'll be giving away three takeaways from each module and outside module using three materials within the modules. So let's start with module one. All right, so let's start off with module one, my takeaways from module one. So module one is national in the global. So the first reading that I, uh, the first material that I used for this was the reading by David Damsrosh, uh, World Literature, National Context. So my main takeaway in this reading is that um, works, materials, uh, pieces like that, they become world literature as soon as they're received by a foreign country, a foreign place. So for example, <laughs> this this work right here by David Damrosh, um, it's considered world literature to us because it was written in a foreign country and our country, Philippines, used it and integrated it into our educational systems right, right now. And then um, adding on to that, world literature is about the countries who are using the literature the countries who are receiving the literature it's about them as much as it is uh, about the country of origin so when you think world literature literature you don't just think about uh, the country of origin you think about what the country who received it is doing because in this example as written in the reading they could use the literature coming from the foreign lands in many different contexts they could use it as a basis to improve themselves so it could be used positively they could use it as a way to learn uh, so they could learn from it and then use it in a better light but there's also uh, it could also be used for self-improvement in a more negative way in a sense that this should not be what our goal is like it could be more focused on doing anything else but that so that could be the second way of receiving of how uh, literature could be received by those countries that are using literature from foreign lands so following on to that um, the next two materials that i'd like to tackle would be one reading and one short clip so the first reading is well, it's a story. It's The Lottery by Shirley Jackson. And I'd like to focus on the concept of culture and tradition in this one because my takeaway would be mostly regarding that and that would also be the, um, the takeaway that I would get after reading the story and then um, when, I'm, when I connect it to the theme of the module. So The Lottery, the lottery is a pretty short story relative to other stories. It focuses on a, a small community, and then the story is really vague. It starts off with everyone acting all friendly, but as soon as the story gets going, there are certain parts wherein you start realizing that the there's something wrong, there's something uh, amiss in the air, and that there's an uh, underlying problem that we'll eventually find out. Find out, and then that problem is they, um, the higher ups in the town. They choose a name of the box, thus lottery, and then that person must be 
killed or sacrificed by the townspeople. And then, an important thing to note here is context. Because we're missing out context. We as the readers are missing out context. Because as far as we know, that's just the culture of that town. That's tradition. And that's only as far as we'll get. And then, in that, in that sense as well, in the story, even some of the townspeople are starting to forget or starting to question their tradition, why they're even following it in the first place. Even men- making mention of the fact that other cities have stopped doing that tradition wherein they sacrifice people. And then, based on the pretenses within the story, we find out that the older generation used to say that they would do it, they would uh, make sacrifices to provide a better harvest for the town. And then, that's the context that we are missing as viewers initially as to why they're doing those cultures in ah, the, the tradition for the first place. So my takeaway here is that we may not be able to fully understand the culture that other others are practicing, that others have in their lives. And that even present generations still practicing those traditions may forget themselves since they start to question it in, even in the story. And then my last material and last takeaway for module 1 would be from the animated short film Bao. So Bao is a cute animated short film that focuses on a Chinese mother um, raising a food in the shape of her, of her well not in the shape of her child uh, it a dumpling there you go a dumpling that reminds her of her child which we find out later on in the series is actually the representation or replacement of her child because her child like they had I'm not sure if they had the fight but there's a falling out that caused the child to leave the home and then find a a girlfriend or a fiance or a partner in general. So my main theme on this one, still related to Model 1, is local identity, which was mentioned in the um, Model 1 introduction. So local identity, it refers to distinctive features that people have, or maybe cultures have, that makes them different. It can be either good or bad, but in this case, Bao, the mother was focusing on the bad because her son brought home a foreigner girlfriend, which her initial um, her initial thoughts on about the girl are negative, that she's a delinquent of some sort, and that she'll take her son away from him, uh, from her. But that's completely missing out on the local identity of the foreigner which we find out later on in the film is actually quite the opposite of what the mother envisioned so here also we'll also be making use of context because we don't know the context of the foreigner girlfriend at the start of the film we're only basing it off what the mother knows and what the mother perceives the girl to be and that would be my main takeaway for the third material of module one is that local identity it could be local identity local identity is important and that we may interpret it differently but at the end of the day the foreigner has her own local identity that the mother completely misinterpreted okay now moving onwards to module two the colonial past and the post-colonial present so in this module i'll also be giving three takeaways and insights taken from three materials that were included in the module one um, material is the required uh, clip and then two of the other materials are the links included within the module so the first takeaway i got was from the actual required material itself from the post-colonial ways of dealing clip so within this material, it's just an entry-level um, video that talks about post-colonialism in general. So it talks about post-colonial literature, uh, which is basically 
literature that was created after colonization, thus post-colonial. And then there's the post-colonial criticism, which is literature literature that focuses on the works that critique the effects of um, colonialism. So it really just focuses on the impacts of colonialism as a whole. So my um, main takeaway from this is that people remember, like, even though they didn't, it didn't happen to them directly, the colonialism didn't happen to them directly, their future generations will remember what happened to their ancestors. It's going to be written down and marked forever in history what happened to their people. And then even more so than just being written in history, they're going to be seeing the effects directly firsthand in their lives. They're going to experience it eventually. What the effects of post-colonialism uh, post would be. That's my main takeaway from Model 1, which I'll further on in the... Ah, uh, sorry, for Model 2, which I'll further on in the other materials, along uh, with my other takeaways. So the next material that I'm going to tackle is You've Got to Be Carefully Taught from South Pacific. So this is a song that really focuses on the idea that it's not innate within human beings to hate other people, other races, if you would. So it is not born in us to hate other people. It's, as the song says, taught eventually throughout our life. So using that as a basis and then following the ah uh, supporting the previous statement that I made from the other takeaway from the first material there's a reason for the discrimination and the hatred it didn't come from nowhere and then th that reasoning could be the environment could be the people around you and it could be the general atmosphere of a area that you live in which is the result of post-colonialism as a whole so furthering more on that um, an example would be a certain area was colonized and then in that area they mistreated a certain race and then after years have passed and then everyone has rights and equality or as they're trying to go for equality it's um, some of the older generations may still have within them the mindset that the first colonizers did and that they're treating the race that they initially did badly still the same way and then that kind of mindset will then influence the other generations and that would be the environment that would create the hate for that certain race and that would be the main takeaway for um, the second material. Now the third material is, I believe would be more on post-colonial criticism since it's it's from College Humor, as we all know. It's from their skit, I'm Black, Not Poor. And it's just poking fun of the old notion that um, African-American people are poor in general. So there's the negative stigma surrounding or there's a negative mindset that existed especially during the time when this skit was created that african-american people are generally poor which is no longer the case now however during that time that was the stigma and this um clip made fun of that stigma they um even though the main uh, subject the african-american was saying that he had the same jobs as the, his other co-workers that he can contribute equally uh, the same way as to them when the, the pizza came. They were still talking as if he was unable to contribute or provide. And then they were making that assumption solely based on his race and the skin color. And that's like a criticism in a way is that it's um, sarcastic and it's not to be taken seriously. It's poking fun of the of that of that negative stigma. And then my my main takeaway is that 
it's all right to be talking about these kinds of things. It's actually important that you bring it up. Um, it could be whatever way, in however way you want, but what's important is that you bring it to light the situation and then that you're not doing it uh, to spread the negative stigma or the negative influences, but rather you're doing it to bring up the attention of the public about these kinds of things that are happening to the races that were discriminated during the as a result of the post-colonial of the colonial period and that would be my three main takeaways from the materials from module two and now moving on to module three my favorite module routes and routes so my first takeaway from this module was actually from a clip that was shown to us very early on in the term it's from the sitcom series animated sitcom series son of zorn so son of zorn basically is 2d and 3d mixed together um the main character is zorn he is from a 2d world and then he has his ex-wife and son alan living in the 3d world so zorn goes to earth the 3d world and at first he's not very used to it because the culture the lifestyle everything is different so throughout the first episode he's shown trying the best that he can doing what he does normally then he finds out that what what he does normally and how he usually acts doesn't work in his new environment so later on to the first episode Zorn actually puts more effort into trying to understand the culture of Earth and then how he can fit in better using the newfound knowledge that he had to adjust there. So the, one of the takeaways I learned is that it is, <laughs> it is possible to adjust to a new environment. Sometimes it's inevitable for us to leave our comfort zone in this case zorn his comfort zone is where he came from the 2d world originally and he was moved uh he moved to the 3d world to be with son alan to build a relationship with him and then like i said my takeaway is that if you try hard enough and if you put enough effort especially if you have a goal that you're really trying to meet you'll be able to adjust into your new environment and then the next takeaway I have for Module 3 is actually coming from uh, one of the clips in Module 3 as well. It's from Jokoi, a very famous comedian and then stand-up artist. So it's from his clip, Follow Your Dreams, which is... <laughs> uh, my learning from that clip is that it's alright to follow your dreams <laughs> as straightforward as it is maybe your parents family members relatives have different plans for you and your future maybe they already have a set vision of where they want you to be what course you want to take what job they want you to take but at the end of the day <laughs> it's all right to have your own dreams your own visions your own path for yourself and honestly it's much better for you to follow the path that you made for yourself it's alright to hear opinions from all these important people because eventually you're, you're going to have to weigh in their opinions since like i said they're important people for you and they probably want what's best for you as well but at the end of the day you're the one who's going to make the decision to move forward with your life you're going to be the one defining your future and then how you want to take your future basically you're taking your future into your own hands and then you're moving yourself forward through your own actions towards your own goal. And then my last takeaway from module 3 is from a short poem or essay type. It's Fire by Gloria Vando. Now when I first um, read Fire, I honestly didn't understand it. It was during our persona, cl uh, persona activity. Um, I didn't understand what's happening. I thought it was literal. Uh, I mean, it could be open to interpretation, 
maybe there was actual literal fire or maybe there wasn't but the essence of the poem is that the main character is now in the present but she was looking back at a time where she and her grandmother was forced to evict the place that they were living in and then i learned that my takeaway from that is that sometimes it's really outside of our control whether we want to move into a new environment or into a new world completely it's different in let's see zorn's case where he intentionally went to earth to be with alan he didn't have to do that but he wanted to build a relationship with his son however in that poem they were forced out by something outside of their control and they were left with no choice but to move forward with their life afterwards and then since it's a it's mostly a flashback from the perspective of uh the girl in the present so right now she's adjusted of course she's in a new environment but she was looking back at the time where she was forced to move out to move out of her comfort zone so basically at one point you're gonna get to a better place in your new environment but she was just looking back at the time where she had no other choice but to leave her comfort zone because of some things out of her control and that's my main takeaway for modulity okay now moving forward to the last of the takeaways from from the class because this one is focused on the lessons discussions tackled outside of the given modules so the first one i want to tackle is elements of fiction elements of fiction was well it's a very baseline uh lesson it's entry level it's something that was taught to us even in elementary or high school it's the basic parts of what makes fiction fiction it's the <laughs> elements of fiction that's the really the best way to describe it so there's the characters the characters the the people in the story what are their names descriptions are they flat or are they round characters and then there's the point of views of the narrator narrate narrator there's the first person second person third person point of views then there's the 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 language and the dialogue um what language did they use within the within the story or the material and then dialogue how was their conversations exchanges presented as and then there's the, the setting when it happened where it happened there's the plot like what kind of how was the material presented is it linear or is it non-linear the best i can think of is linear just chronological order really baseline um it's the the plot progressing that a lot of movies follow non-linear the only one that i can think of right now is the movie memento which is a really good movie by the way so memento it's an example of a non-linear movie because it starts from the back to the front and then there's the the theme the theme is the main idea behind the full material why it was created and what uh, lessons or morals it wants to present to its viewers then we get to the terms the devices and the styles these are just the the terms that's used in fiction that's often used in fiction so flash forward a sneak forward and what happens to the future flashback uh, a sneak back at what happened already they use ex machina uh, a situation was resolved suddenly and unexpectedly um yeah those are uh certain terms that are used in fiction then finally the structure structure is well structure is one of the first things that you learn when they talk about stories so that's the basic the introduction to the story the conflict what point uh, what makes the story have any essence like what's the, what's what's really the problem and there's the climax that's the most important most exciting part of the um of the material then there's the resolution it's slowly starting to get fixed the enemy the final solution to the con to the conflict then the 
epilogue. What happens after the conflict has been resolved, after everything has been uh, fixed? That's my first takeaway from the topics that we um, tackled from outside of the modules, which is really interesting that there's still elements of fiction here because it's, like I said, I've been saying the whole time throughout this uh, takeaway is that it's baseline. It's been taught very early on and it's really interesting to me that it's still relevant and still just as much used in uh, higher education in higher analysis. That's my first uh, takeaway for the outside models. And then uh, speaking of analysis, we'll be going next to my second takeaway from the uh, from another uh, lesson that was ta uh, tackled outside of the modules within the uh, class. And that's the elements of literary experience. So this is the, well, it's a framework that says that these are the elements of a literary experience. So it has the author who made the work, the material, the reader, us, uh, the viewers who are receiving and then looking at the material itself there's the text the material that's the the material the work that was created by the author and there's the other works of the author taking into consideration what else the author of the text material has created what other things he has made and then tradition which is referring to all the other materials texts and stuff like that created the same theme and then under literary experience after taking into consideration all of these elements of literary experience there's the uh, evaluation or the assessments on how you'll receive these materials taking into consideration all of the elements that i uh, mentioned prior so there's a subjective evaluation which is your uh as written there a knee-jerk reaction like it's your really your reflex your first contact with the material how you first reacted so you're taking into consideration your preferences your bias when you uh come in contact with the material then there's the critical evaluation it's it comes usually after the subjective evaluation where you now take into consideration uh everything that the material has to offer so it's a second look a review of the material that you first viewed initially and that's now taking into consideration the elements of literary experience. And then um, there's also the literary theories that you have to take into consideration of. So literary theories are basically like the lens into which people use to view, analyze, and then study certain texts and materials. So these uh, theories could be, for example, the feminist approach, uh, the the queer approach, the Marcus approach, uh, those are just some examples. So when I say lens, it's like, let's say, um, feminist approach. We'll use the feminist approach to view a certain material. We'll take a look at the material and focus on what uh, what, in con what it contains that has themes that would relate to feminism and then women empowerment. And that would be my... Uh, takeaways from materials outside of the modules okay <laughs> heading straight into the last question um it's i'm gonna read it it's how do you see your learning and insights from jelly 2 contributing to your development as an individual and member of society even after academic life in the De la salle so my learning and insights from this class i believe it would help in my development in a sense that I'd be able to apply all the learnings, all the materials, all the lessons from the materials into my, um, I won't say daily life, but in my mindset. Like they would help in contributing to how I approach things, how I think of things and how I would study them. And I think what really, what I would really think into consideration and what would actually change my mindset in those kinds of things would influence my mindset is would be, what would be the how impactful the material is because that's uh, completely subjective because some materials some lessons are um i wouldn't say well some materials are more interesting to me than the others that's the best way i would put it and some materials are they're just truly captivating to me i'm saying that with full honesty 
And an example of that material is when we uh, we tackled our dramatic reading assignment. And I was looking at the possible dramatic reading works. And then I, I, I encountered Red by John Logan. And Red, I kept reading it over and over again. Um, but initially, because I first didn't understand what was happening, I didn't understand the importance, the lesson, the I didn't understand the elements of the of fiction that was present in it. I didn't understand the literary experience in the work. However, after doing a lot more research, because we had the quizzes about it, I did a lot more research. I read the whole script. I watched a one-hour, thirty-minute film. With, um, by Alfred Molina about it. I read I read the script while watching the film side by side and then at the end it was just really impactful to me. I learned a lot of lessons from it. It it changed my mindset on how I perceive things and then how other people would perceive things even though we're thinking about and talking about the exact same thing. And I think that kind of mindset would help my development as an individual and as a member of society because those kinds of materials in our Jelly 2 class that, that read this just one example but there's a lot of materials inside our uh, modules in Jelly 2 that really left a huge impact on me and that I am certain that even after class ends I would still keep thinking about I'd still keep recalling because that's uh, that's the kind of person I am I would randomly sometimes look back at important events or certain materials that really struck me like they really like shake my mindset and influence it heavily to the point where even my perspectives and way of approaching things would change drastically solely because of that material and those materials are not lacking whatsoever within our jelly 2 modules and i believe these would help me grow as a person would help me better understand like but would be, would help me better understand other possible materials that I may encounter in the future when I'm working already or if I ever choose to pursue a higher education I believe that that kind of mindset or the mindset that I learned right now I'd be able to apply it then in the future and then the like, as I said the materials I'd be able to do the exact same thing I'm doing to them right now. Taking them in, not just reading them, but actually understanding them and applying them and taking into consideration what underlying themes, what pretenses are present within those materials. So to conclude my synthesis and video blog and to also give out my other insights that I want to share in general, I unexpectedly enjoyed our Jelly 2 class. Um, I say unexpectedly because I was expecting it to be very difficult and I didn't think that it would catch my interest in a way that I'd be able to keep on consistently paying attention to the lessons or to keep reading the modules. But fortunately, I was wrong in the best way possible in a sense that I was absolutely enamored with some of the lessons, some of the materials. It introduced me to many materials that I already actually saved in my own personal folder in a laptop away from my school materials. Just uh, certain materials that I would look back into maybe in the future and then to just read about them because of the impact that they left on me. Um, so from module 1, module 2, module 3 and lessons outside of the modules, I learned quite a lot of things, many the week takeaways that I didn't expect that I'd have after finishing the uh, class. And then the class itself, I, I fully enjoyed that I had a lot of fun despite it being on a Saturday morning. It was not my first experience to go to school on a Saturday morning, on 7.30 in the morning actually. So I was used to it and I didn't mind. And then I was actually quite excited <laughs> in a sense to attend class compared to my other GE classes because I was looking forward to what else we would tackle in class and then what other learnings we would have. Because um, uh, 
the class had a lot of materials, a variety of text, readings, clips that I've never seen before. And after reviewing them all thoroughly, I, I had a lot more learnings than I initially expected. And yeah, this <laughs> is to end it. I fully enjoyed our class and I had a lot of learnings that I would use in the future that I would apply right now to build myself up as an individual.